Hello everyone, this is Terripper, and on this grandest of Fridays, this is feeling like a good Friday, it's a good Friday, I'm going to be making a new skins video. And you guys might be thinking, but, but Terripper, there's no new skins? This is a... It's actually a good room. I need to make a video about Mirage. Anyway, there's no new skins. What are you talking about? Well, I've been getting a lot of requests to make a video about all the skins that came out in the period where I did not make a video about the skins. So I'm going to do just that. Also, as a sidebar, uh, I want to know your guys' opinion on how you think these videos have been doing the past couple months, since the start of the year. I tried a new naming convention, tried a new sort of type of video release schedule. It's the same as last year's, only I put out one more shit video a week, and I've got a different schedule. But, it's strange, I've been seeing less views overall. So, give me your guys' opinion, because I, I, I want to I put something out there that you guys want to see, uh, in terms of, of a schedule and videos and whatnot. I'm not going to take up too much time, just, you know, let me know in the comments. That sort of thing. Uh, so, not as to uh, burden yourself with stuff... I am going to simply go through all the skins uh, from the last couple months in succession. So I think I made a video about the Killing Floor 2 skins, but I kind of have, I kind of want to show you guys them just just because they're freaking awesome. Uh, so first things first, you got your standard ass throwing knives. You know, I always like these throwing knives. I thought they looked really good, really deck, really nice. Then we got your Hedge Trimmer freaking blade from Killing Floor 2. This is awesome. It's so cool. I love this thing. Uh, and I do own Killing Floor 2, for those of you who, who don't, don't know by now. That's my longsword skin. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to fly over to that right now. That's a longsword. This is my baby. This right here. Mm -mm. <clears throat> it's, this is gorgeous. It's freaking gorgeous. And Sin, some of you guys might know, I play with him a lot, gave me a lot of shit for this, the, the tip of this sword being hooked, because that doesn't make any freaking sense in terms of a sword. But I like it. I don't give a shit. It looks cool as hell. Then, of course, we have the Maul Verizer. So, we got ourselves the normal Maul. You know, it's okay. I never really liked how the normal Maul looked. I think the Tenderizer is probably the best, like, basic Maul skin replacement. But then you got this motherfucker. And if you guys ever played Killing Floor 2, you know there, there's a weapon. Actually, that looks like this. I forgot the name. I think it is actually the Maul Verizer. A Pulverizer. That, that's what it's called in, in Killing Floor 2. But in this, it's perfect. It is immaculate. It looks good. It doesn't make any sense, actually, in the canon of, of chivalry. But I like using it, because it's fun. So, I don't care. Uh, Alright. Uh, next, Flesh Pound Quarterstaff. I'll bring us over here. To the Quarterstaff. So, you got your regular vanilla Quarterstaff. Blah. And you got this thing, which I'll, I'll take a look at later. Uh, and then you got this motherfucker. This is so cool. <laughs> this is just... Oh, I love it so much. It looks ridiculous, uh, given that it's chivalry, but I love it so much. Also, I think his thumb is clipping through it. But I freaking love it. It is so cool. So damn cool. Also, there is the Plague Doctor mask, which uh, many of you will probably know about from just basically seeing it. You can use this on any class. I love it, I love it, I love it. I am a court armor man myself, though. <laughs> and that is everything in chivalry that they added from Killing Floor 2. And next, uh, we're going to go to the uh, New Workshop Weapons and Armor, which I... Uh, hold on. Okay, Black Orchid. So this is a reply... I'm currently reading all the updates on my phone, so do do forgive me if I, if I uh, stumble. So we got your regular thrusting dagger, which I've always liked this design. It's very nice. And you got the Rondell dagger, which I believe I have... Uh, reviewed at points before. It kind of looks like a wand, except you stab people with it. It's really minimal. I freaking love it. I think the fact that it looks like a wand a bit, though, kind of takes away. But then, you got your Black Orchid. My god. <laughs> this is this is the kind of kind of blade you'd use to assassinate a king. It just looks that badass. Totally worth two bucks. And made by 2D or Fingerprints vs. Rabbit. I'll just let you guys see that. In the center of the screen. I'll also credit him because it makes sense. This is a beautiful weapon. I really should buy it. I, don't, I use the dagger a good bit. I should buy it. And then we've got the Chieftain Spatha. Replacement for the Norse Sword. This sword, I'm not too impressed with, to be perfectly honest. So, we've got the default Norse Sword. You know, I, I never really liked the default. I bought every single other skin, though. Love the Wolfric. God damn, is this a good skin. 
so it's total chrome silver beautiful renaissance rapier very stylistic very decorative uh, very beautiful model then you got blade brother's son just straight up out there right it is flaunting this gold badass spiky it's so cool and you got the chieftain spatha and it's a very minimal weapon for a weapon that i'd rather not be minimal with to be perfectly honest the it doesn't change enough from the basic Norse sword skin, in my opinion. It just, it kind of cleans it up a bit, and I'm not into that. Alright, uh, though Primate makes a lot of good skins, if I know him. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's a really big skin maker. So, this isn't a big, big black mark on him. And some people really like that minimalistic feel, and they might really, really like this sword for immersion. Like, I know this sword. No, this sword's fine. This sword, I don't think anybody would ever use this sword in battle unless they're like a freaking rich-ass mercenary. So, you might like that for the immersion. Uh, next up is the classic Roman numeral century Volge a replacement for the halberd. I'll, I'm going to read it properly. I know Roman numerals. Uh, it is a halberd replacement. No. All right, so I'm just going to go through all the skins. So you got your normal halberd, halberd, and I, I rather like the halberd skin, to be perfectly honest. You got your kraken halberd. Oh, that's great. I've reviewed that before. Swiss royal halberd, halberd, really tiny. It's, it's, it's very imposing, though. It's got nice etchings. And then your Volge. I've always thought the Volge is one of the most gruesome-looking weapons in history. And god damn, Paranoch, it's good for you. And Teyu Natsume, make it work. It is freaking awesome. If I use the Halberd enough to merit this purchase, I w I'd buy it. It's no problem. Even if I, even if I like, secondarily played freaking Vanguard, I'd take it. Because it's awesome. Uh, I love the heck out of it. This, it looks so good. Uh, then, of course, you have the Guilty Gavel, a replacement for the Maul. This thing is a monstrosity, all right? So, I like doing this. I like showing you the base Maul. Again, kind of boring. Not a big fan of it. Then you got this thing. This is gorgeous. This is probably one of the most beautiful skins I've ever seen. It has so much detail, so much depth, so many little etchings that I can't even hope to comprehend. They probably mean absolutely nothing. But I love it. It's just so beautiful. And you destroy heads with it. It's so good. I really want to buy it. Great job to Ninth Knight for creating this work of art. Because that is what it is. You got this incredible uh, bottom hilt piece. And then this amazing hammer section. It's, it's gorgeous. I love this weapon. I should really buy it. I need to throw him some coin. Alright. Next up we've got the Rivar Set 1 and Rivar Set 2. And I should be able to see these monkey brains. Uh, or perhaps not. Act the Vanguard set that replaces the Bardiche. Uh, so, I believe... Hmm. No. Yeah, I guess it's, I guess it's not armor. Uh, if it is armor, I apologize. But the Rivar set 1 replaces the Bardiche. And if it's Bardiche, I do apologize. Maybe I have to go to the individual thingy. I get the Vanguard set. Um, no, that wouldn't make sense. All right, whatever. So we'll just we'll just go through them. What the hell? So I think it's the lacerating Volge. Uh, we got the regular Bardiche. I like how this looks, but it's really dirty for my taste. I don't know why the blade is so rusty like that. I like it to be nicer. I think the lacerating Volge makes up for that. It's a really beautiful Bardiche blade. Bardiche, however you say it. Uh, however, the middle the circular, it's almost too clean for me. That's where the Jadart staff comes in. This thing is, it looks like what an executioner might use if he was missing his uh, big axe. He just pulled this out of a, uh, a barrel. We're good. I'm just going to chop some heads off today. It's gruesome. It's primal. The squareness of it makes it just so much more different to me than the Lacerating Bulge. So good job on both of these. I don't know which one was actually in this set, but whatever. Uh, and it's an alternative model for the Bardiche. Only use another Vanguard. Yeah, I know. Uh, Elbaro and Is Lipaway made the Jadart staff. Looks freaking awesome. And then we've got the Rivar set 2. Reaver? Reaver? River? Whatever. Uh, War Axe. It replaces the War Axe. So, I've never been a big War Axe user myself. However, Base skin, I think, looks really good. The wood looks retarded, though. We got some bumps in places there shouldn't be bumps. Something like the Sunder makes it look so good. I'm pretty sure I might have reviewed this thing before. And made by Primate, again, makes a lot of skins. Is Lip Away and El Barro, just the dynamic duo, making the Horseman's Axe. 
bit too small for my taste, but I like it. I like it a lot. It, it, it expresses a lot with that spike at the top and the side, and then this clean blade. Really well made. Really, really tight. Although that tightness, it's too, it's a bit too small for my taste. However, the Campaigner, I think, is the perfect balance. Good size. Great blade. I love this double, this, this double curve here. It's really cool. I don't know the mechanics of making weapons, but I love it when weapons have something like that in it. That double curve there on the, um, the butt, I guess you might call it. No, that would be the butt on the, uh, just the bottom of the axe blade. Again, however, the wood is a little bit retarded. It, it might just be the coloring, it might just be the shading, uh, but I, I prefer to have my wood straight and narrow. All right, we're going to stop right there. Stop right there. And there's a nice little spike at the back. I like that. So that's all of the war axes and all of the Bardishas. I mean, I got those covered, so that's fine. I must have covered the River sets at some point. All right, next, Royal Squad. The Agatha Archer set that replaces the Javelin. I'm gonna fly over to the Javelin. That's a typo. That doesn't look good. So, base Javelin. I don't use this ever, but it's a nice weapon. It's actually a very well-crafted, looks very generic, sadly. Uh, then... I may not have reviewed this weapon before. You've got the Whistler. Uh, I think this came out with the Barbarian patches. Looks really good. It, it, I don't like the strings. The ropes aren't, don't seem to be very well rendered, as, uh, painted on. I, I'm not exactly certain of the technical terms. Just The one thing I don't like about this are the ropes. But yes, this was released by Torn Banner. You can tell because it doesn't have a uh, designer's name there. I like this a lot. But then you got the Royal Squad Squad Javelin. <laughs> Royal Squad Javelin. It looks so, so good. So good. This is that little bit of flair that you really want wanted out of the normal javelin. And I like it. You got the gold accents. Sort of that lime green finish ever so slightly. And then this beautiful chrome blade. I love this thing so much. And apparently there's also a Royal Squad Archer helmet. This was made by Ni Hui Shenmei. Uh, I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, so Royal Squad Archer helmet. Let's just go check that thing out. Doopy doopy doop. Uh, oh, I need to go to the Agatha team for this. Do I not? Apparently not. Royal Squad Archer Helmet. Reporting for duty, sir. Oh, wait. Nope, it's Agatha. There it is. Nice. Yeah, so it's this thing. Uh, this looks ridiculous. It makes you kind of look like a king as an archer. But it's okay. Oh, this is completely different. This is not at all related. Don't listen to me, guys. I don't know shit. Don't... That's not it. I don't understand why they separate all this crap. So, apparently, it also comes with an Agatha Royal Squad Archer Helm. But it doesn't. It's not on the list. It's not on the fucking list. Whatever, I digress. It's probably somewhere and I just can't see it. You know, if I just go through this thing, will it find it? No, it won't. All right, that's fine. So, next up is the Skull Crusher, a replacement for the Cudgel. I don't think I've actually seen this one. Let's take a look. So, we got the Cudgel. Of course, I got to go to Ban on Arms. Normal Cudgel looks like the most gruesome club of all time. It looks like something that if you bat, like, it looks like something a barbarian would use. It's awesome. Then you've got the Skull Crusher, which seems to keep that same primal design, just make it a little more blunt. <laughs> Cudgel has these nice, polished studs. This thing, looks like it's got just nails put into it. It's freaking awesome. I like it. Good job, Pernak. It's good for you. And Teyu Natsumi. Another dynamic duo. And then we've got the Winter Soldier, a replacement for the Sword of War. Ooh. I'd like to see that. I, there's been some really good Sword of War uh, skins coming out. Love Final Guard. I showed you guys that a while ago. Uh, let's just show you guys that right now. I love this sword so much. So much. I know it doesn't make sense. It looks really fantasy-esque, but meh. The normal Sword of War is just too boring for me. And Winter Soldier, it looks like the exact same thing. Honestly, I kind of prefer the vanilla to this. No offense, oily stool, but it, you just straightened the blade and, and made the, the cross guard a little bit more, a little bit different. Good job, definitely. I'm sure there's some people who would like this, this more minimalist approach. Like I said, definitely there are some people that, that will. Uh, I'm probably not one of those people, though. And that is that set right there. We got a couple sets to go through. So this might be a decent video, but decently long video. But that's okay. That is A-OK. -okay. All right, so next up, we have 
the Agathian Archer Helmet. I'm just going to go ahead and go to Ag Agatha. Uh, called Circled Princial Sevier. And here it is. First of all, Default Helmet. Eh, archer Default Helmet, I think, makes a lot of sense, given it's an archer. Then you got the Circled Princial Sevier. It turns you into a scorpion. Sort of. This is a really weird helmet. It's really, 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 really weird. It's strange. I don't agree with it. I think that uh, this archer needs to get off of the drugs. That would be my recommendation. I think if you're an archer, you may like this. I've seen a lot of archers having this helmet. Surprisingly, I'm just not a big fan. Although I don't use the archer. I'm not a big fan of the archer anyway. But good job, Spudnik and Pure. Looks like you put a lot of work into this. It's actually a very nice looking helmet, to be perfectly honest. There's a lot of good patterns on the uh, leather section on the interior. That looks leather. I think it is. Then you've got the rat set. Oh, I love this set. I see it all the time. It's an Agatha Knight set. You got the rat helm. Looks really interesting. Really intricate. I may I, I get the feeling I've reviewed this helm before, but whatever. I'm gonna review it again because it's really cool. It's got these all these wavy lines, lots of emotion being effused from this helmet. Mostly the emotion of I'm a fucking rat. Except you're a knight. Good job, Zelfit, on this thing. This is redonkulously cool. Uh, and when I see it in combat, it looks stupid as fuck, but I love it. I have I can't help but but chuckle a little bit. And of course, the weapon replacement for that is the heavy flail. Uh, this is the normal heavy flail. It looks disgusting. Looks like it's gonna break your face in. Disgusting in a good way, of course. Then you got the rat flail. It's got a rat on the end, as well as a rat holding the chain. It, it uh, it's something. It's definitely something. I don't know what I feel, how I feel about this weapon, because I don't really use the heavy flail much. But it looks, it looks kind of funky. If someone broke my face in with that, I would be laughing to my grave. Utterly so. And now we are going to go over to the Tenderizer. A mall replacement. This is the Guilty Gavel. And of course, basic mall. Bleh. Then we've got the Tenderizer. I get the feeling that I've... I have reviewed these. Fuck. Alright, we're just gonna, um... Skip all of these. <laughs> I have reviewed all of these. Tenderizer. It looks dirty. It looks good. It's cool. Fantastic. I'm glad I caught this, like, midway. That would have been very embarrassing. Had I just gone through the whole damn thing. All right, now, weapons that I've definitely not done. So, the Campaigner, we've already looked at. That was the War Axe. The Crab-Nosed Bassinet, an Agatha Knight helmet. Let's go check that mother lover out. I don't want this rat helm. I want the Crab-Nosed Bassinet. So, default helm. I always liked the Agathian default helm. Uh, I always liked, I think it looks very knightly. That's what I imagine a knight helm to be. Let's see what this is. This, wow, this is actually really good. This is really, really nice. Oily stool, great job. I, I, I know I just said that this is what I consider, this is what I always think of a knight to be, but this, this is what I think of when I think of a badass knight. Having this helm with a slit for both your eyes and just a minimalist, very tight contours all over the place. Very small contour up there. It's really good looking helm. I love it. Then we got the Gothic Mall by someone named 300 Babies. I rather enjoy that name. Again, default mall. And then this thing. Oh, I've seen this thing around. I love it so much. So, uh, the only thing that I have to go against this mall, and it is the only thing, is that it, it's kind of too small, in my opinion. I don't see something like this actually crushing someone's skull in. I'm sure it was perfectly possible for something like this to do that, but that versus something like this, it's it's a weird comparison to make. But that aside, this is a gorgeous mall. The patterning on the handle, the incredible uh, designs up here. That, that little cross there is so nice. And this red accent right here kind of makes the whole thing. It gives it a color that makes it pop, and I love it. Just like up your, p p just like your opponent's heads. I didn't, that was really high pitched. I'm not gonna try that again though. I apologize. Anyway, onward. Mercenary round shield, a replacement for the buckler. I saw this on someone the other day. It is a, it's the first shield skin. So we're gonna go over to the buckler, and uh, replacement for the buckler shield. This is a normal buckler. Ah, 
I thought it was always serviceable. I never expected there to be shield skins. And you got this thing. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't the right thing. No, uh, hold on. A replacement for the buckler shield. Oh, it, it might be here. Hold on. Yep, it's here. My bad, don't listen to me. So, stock shield, mercenary round shield. This looks really, really good. I love this thing. If I used a shield regularly, I'd buy the hell out of this. Oily Stool makes a ton of good stuff. That, that little center dome extrusion is so nice. And these, like, spiky outcrop... Oh, I love the whole thing! It's so cool! It's so different from the basic buckler. This, this buckler's so boring, but I never thought it was boring until seeing this. It's so nice. So beautiful. A little bit of clipping, but I think that's with the normal shield, too. Yep. And next, we've got the Montante. A replacement for the Zweihander by El Wabaro. El Wabaro making some incredible... Stuff. I said Zweihander. Why did I click Claymore? So, stock Zweihander looks pretty good. Pretty good. Disgusting, as usual, just in a good way. Then we got the Montante, which takes that design and runs with it. Runs directly into a pile of gold, apparently, because we've got gold accents, and we've got this straight blade, and then these, these curved spikes. And I like how it takes the normal Zweihander... And just twists everything around. The spikes get curved up. The these uh, the outward extrusions here for the cross guard get swirled in some really nice fleur de lis patterns. It's so beautiful. I love this thing. And next, of course, we have the bear axe. I like saying that. Uh, I don't know what it looks like though. It's a bearded axe skin. We've got the normal axe. I've always liked how the bearded axe looked. It looks very Viking esque. What I imagine a Viking would carry. Then the bear axe. Did I say Viking? I'm sorry. I meant this thing. God, this looks good. The subtlest patterns on the blade, which I wish I could zoom into. I wish there was a zoom in feature here. But those subtlest patterns on the blade there are just immaculate. I love it. And this the chrome of it. The chrome of the rings around the handle. The beautiful wood. Take a hint, you war axe designers. This wood is not retarded like yours. It's straight. Except at the top, but that's fine because there's a ring before it. This is a beautiful axe. Great job, LSM. Next, we've got the Dura Sword. Replacement for the Sword of War. Which I can find right here. Sword of War, again, stock. Eh, pretty good sword. The Dura Sword. I know how to say that because I'm in German class. Takes that design and gives it some curves. Uh, <laughs> to, to say it lightly. So... It tones down the cross guard immensely. It makes it just two lines almost that are curved at the ends. And I think this is reminiscent of a long sword skin, which I may be getting to in a minute if I haven't reviewed it already. I like this skin a decent amount. I think the blade's a bit too dirty for my tastes, but I like it a decent bit. The hilt's nice. The cross guard makes it, in my opinion, and then it's got these nice little cuts there at the bottom of the blade. It's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Then we have reached the end of that that was from the anvil strikes update don't know what it's actually called though and now we move on to the um the winter skins the stuff that came out they were kind of christmas winter themed and we're going to take a look at those so the ottoman saber a replacement for the saber i'm going to go to man at arms and throw it over to the saber all right Stock Saber, I always thought looked disgusting as hell. I hate how this thing looks on the blade. I think it's got that, that nice little line going down it, but there's so many, like, little dents and cuts and crap, and I don't like that. I like my weapons looking nice. That's why I like the Wolfric Sword and Blade Brothers Sun so much. The hilt and the and the handle, they're pretty decent. I mean, sorry, the hilt, handle, and the cross guard. I call it the cross guard the hilt for some reason. It looks okay, but whatever. Then you got your Ottoman Saber. This thing looks good. This thing looks real good. Doesn't have nearly as much going on on the blade in the way of chips. It's got this nice handle slash cross guard. I'm sure there's a name for this handle. I don't know it. It looks so nice. I like it a lot. Uh, if I use the saber at all, I, I'd use this shit. Very good work, Zelfit. Then we have the Sword of Dracul. God, I love this thing. All right, I think I think I love this thing. Let me see. All right, it is a longsword skin. So this is stock longsword. I never really had a had a big thing for the stock longsword. I think it looked kind of ridiculous, actually. I don't know any longswords that look like that. But I haven't seen that many real life longswords, to be perfectly clear. So go figure. But the sword of Dracul, it looks like a sword that Dracula would use. It's it's got this incredible looking cross guard, which pops up at the end, and I love that. But it's 
the blade, I think, makes it. It's got this blade with variable thickness and with this curve right at the base, and it, right on the tang, I believe. No, the whole blade is a tang. Right at the base of the sword blade. And it looks so good. This is so solid. Also, this little cross at the center, it's, it just makes it. This blade is beautiful. Great job, PXL. This is a beautiful work of art. One thing I would recommend. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I say recommend, but one, the one thing I, can, I need to criticize is the cross guard. I think it needs to be thicker, to be perfectly honest. And uh, to, to give it a direct comparison, let's see. Yeah, go for something like the Hound's Longsword. This thing has some dank-ass thickness going on on the cross guard. I actually really like this sword. Uh, but I love this weapon. A little bit thicker on the cross guard would be nice, but other than that, it looks gorgeous. Next, we have the Royal Fork. is a fork replacement, again, by LSM. Gonna go over to this thingy. And a boop. So, normal fork. It looks like a uh, fork. It looks like a pitchfork with, like, two less forks. Spikes. Forks? What the fuck? Two less spikes. Uh, I've never been a big fan of this thing, either. It looks really generic, really simple. Ah, I guess the job done, I guess. Then you got this thing. This thing looks really good. This thing looks like something Poseidon might consider carrying. Obviously, he's got his trident. But if he wanted to take a step down, eh, this would be pretty good. It's got two really dirty-looking spikes. And I don't mean in terms of their condition, because they are perfectly clean. I mean dirty in the sense that they look like they could do some serious damage, and I would not want that anywhere near me. Also, I love the detail here on this part of the blade. Get a nice view of that ass. Nice, right here on the blade. Also, the spike at the end. Beautiful little touch there. Love this thing. Looks really good. LSM, great job. I really don't have anything to criticize on this thing. Great job. Next, we've got the Old Baron Sunbow. This is around the time, I think, this update. Whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. Uh, when people started making skins for bows. And as much as I hate archers, I like skins. So, let's take a look at that. Heavy crossbow. So, we got the heavy, heavy crossbow. Always thought it looked really good. I liked the mechanics of it a lot. I liked how it had that turn thing. Uh, very, very nice. I like the art. There, there really is not much art, but I like the, just the simplicity of it, as well as the gruesomeness it looks like it can cause. Then we got the old Baron Sunbow. Don't know why it's called the Sunbow. And I'm... I'm left wanting. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, it's fully made of wood. I don't... I don't know if that's how that works, though. Maybe. I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling this thing fall short just to the original design. I don't know. That might just be me, though. Uh, I, I like the metallicness of this crossbow. That's what I should be getting out of it. The light crossbow, which isn't up here, I feel like that's where I should get the wooden feel. I feel like this would make a lot of sense. Just take out the mechanics, make it a, make it a light crossbow. Make perfect sense. It's got thicker wood in places. I don't think it makes sense as a heavy crossbow. It just looks too small, too unimposing. I think the heavy crossbow should be ridiculously unimposing since it can one-shot a vanguard. It should be a scary weapon. I, I just think this kind of uh, lowers the bar a little bit from the default. But go figure. Frank the Fish, great great work. Always, always got to give praise to the designers, no matter what they create. Then we've got the Blood Sprinkler, a replacement for the Holy Water Sprinkler. Oh, this is my baby. This right here is my baby. The three-sided sprinkler of blood. He's beautiful. But the blood sprinkler takes it to another level. Uh, it's got spikes everywhere. It's got nine degrees of spikes. Woo. Compare that to the other skin, the winged wraith, which I have reviewed before. It's a little bit similar, but the blood sprinkler is just more primal, and I like that a lot. You, you notice me saying primal a lot when I review these weapons, and that's because uh, whenever I see it and I get that word in my head, that means that it just looks like something I can imagine someone beating someone else's head in with. And, like, just like a serial killer. Like this weapon, it looks great. Well, I would almost say it's primal, but this is the weapon I would see in the hands of a soldier. This thing looks like something someone just took a took a club, put a bunch of nails on it, uh, spikes, and, and started bashing his heads in. Simple as that. Next, we got the Butcher set. Agatha Vanguard set replaces the Halberd. It's an Agatha Vanguard set. And we're going to see if we can't find the helmet for this. Butcher. Butcher, 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 butcher. Nice. All right, so default helm. Default Vanguard helm always look kind of weird. Looks like a bucket, but eh, looks good. Looks good. Could be worse. Got a weird dent there. I don't like that, but whatever. Then you got the Butcher's Helm by Oily Stool. I like it a lot. Mm. <laughs> it's a bucket, but I like it a lot. It looks... These designs are so nice. I'm a sucker for designs, if you guys haven't noticed by now. 
Again, incredible work from Oily Stool. I'm just an absolute sucker for designs. Uh, it looks so damn good. This this little jut out, a lot of people would probably hate that. I think it makes it look more imposing. I like it a lot. Great job there. Then we got to go over to the halberd. Then we got the butcher's halberd. Stock halberd. Looks decent. Butcher's halberd. Oh. It just gives you that something extra that I think you always want from the default that you just don't get. And this has it. And it's got it. Good. It's got that beautiful curvature. That awesome back blade. A lot of people underestimate the, the back blade, but I like it a lot. The butt. That ass. <laughs> and again, patterns as usual. Oily stool just going above and beyond. Looks so good. The spike, great. The the hilt, the pommel, incredible. I don't know if it's called the pommel on a pole arm, but I'm going to say pommel. Looks so good. Just an incredible full package. Looks incredible. Now the Vicomte set for the Man-at-Arms replaces the Saber and Buckler. That was the shield I got mixed up with before. And this is for any Man-at-Arms, so we're going to go over to the Buckler. All right, normal Buckler. Looks decent. Uh, again, uh, could be could be worse. Then Vicomte Buckler. I can't say I'm too impressed, to be perfectly honest. I like it. I definitely like it. It looks it looks artsy. It looks nice. Great work from El Barro, as usual. But... Uh, I'm probably spoiled because something like this, the Merc Round Shield, just looks so much cooler. The coolness factor is off the charts with this thing. Well, with this, I'm, I'm left wanting a bit. Like, it, it makes me think this is something... It's probably because it's covered in pink, but... It just makes me think this is something that would be held by a line trooper. I guess that's what a buckler's supposed to be. It definitely pushes the bill up from this thing, in terms of niceness. It definitely looks pretty nice. It looks a lot cleaner than the normal buckler. But this thing looks like something a merc would use, right? You come into battle, you got this thick buckler. It's covered in metal. Looks good. But again, elbow bar, very good job. Uh, different strokes for different folks. And of course, we've got the buckler, the, the saber skin for that. Uh, stock saber, again, I, I'm not a big fan of the blade. For Comte saber, the blade, again, looks a bit dirty. But God, that curve. Mmm, yeah, these curves, man. I'm just sucker. I'm just suckering up for them. And the handle, great work there. I love these kinds of handles. It's kind of, handles. It's kind of like the Renaissance uh, rapier for the Norse sword. It's a really nice, um, just wiry handle. I like that. And that curve is so sick. Compared to the normal saber, it just looks kind of fat, and it goes out and it just kind of poops out at the end there. Vicante saber, shing, goes from wide to point thick. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And finally, we got the Orheim helmet. It's a Mason Vanguard helmet. Doop -a doop -a doop. Orheim, uh, so default helm right here. Mason default helm always looked kind of like a KKK hat just with a helmet under it, uh, over it, but you know, that's just me. I wasn't a big fan of this helm. The Orheim helm. Uh, oh, what the fuck is that? That looks like something a dominatrix would wear. I mean, great work, uh, Nihyu Shinmei. This is really well-made helmet, but it looks more like a sex tool than anything else. Honestly, I think if you took away that little leather strap, obviously that makes sense because that keeps the face part on. If you took that away, it might look a bit, a little bit less evocative. <laughs> I like it. It's a decent helm. I like this top section a lot, actually. I think if you just change this this mouth section, this would be fine. I, I think the fact that it curves way inward way too fast kind of makes it a bit, a bit too much, in my opinion. But go figure. And that was all the skins from the Christmas Fest. Winter Fest, whatever the fuck it was called. And now, I believe this is it. About goddamn time. Uh, the... Uh, Payday 2 skins. Wait, do I own this game? Oh, I do own this game. That's right, I remember. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the fucking helmets. All right, so you got all those new helmets. I would, honestly, I'd buy Payday 2 if it goes on sale for like five bucks just for these skins because they're so good. So you've got your uh, Archer Helm. Default Archer Helm. Again, not a big fan of really any kind. But you got your Hoxton Mask. I love it. I like it so much. It's just so creepy and so cool. And you got this big nose. and oh, It's great. I love it a lot. 
Then you got Dallas, which is a Knight Helm. Uh, default Helm. Bleh, Mason Default Helm. I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. It doesn't do enough for me. Then you got Dallas. That does it. That's pretty nice. I like it a lot. Uh, you got the normal helm surrounding it, and you just got the face part. That big smile. I love it. I love all these helmets. I'm just going to say that now. Uh, I also like these the wrinkle. It's really well made. Then, you got chains. Agatha Mason MAA helmet. Obviously, I will never part from my cord armor helm. But, in case I had to, uh, this is the default helm. And then we've got chains. This thing looks, uh, uh, looks okay. I don't think it does enough different, though, to be perfectly honest. It looks, it's got that big creepy smile, but it doesn't have that full head covers that the Mason, that the, I'm um, not the Mason, but that the Knight Payday 2 helm has. That I, I'd like to see that. I'm not a big fan of, of this Man at Arms helm, but go figure. Finally, however, we have Wolf. This is by far my favorite of these helms. The Fall Helm, and then Wolf. This right here, baby. That does it for me. The sewed shut lips, big nose. Big, deep-set eye sockets. Looks so good. This is my default uh, Vanguard skin most of the time. And I love it. It's so nice, so sick, so cool. And it's full coverage. I like that a lot. And if we go down, we will find... Oh, yeah, I don't think any weapons were actually added from this one. Uh, from that thingy. I thought I saw some. I know I'm drawing this video out a lot. Holy shit. But, let me just see if there's any new skins. No, I've already done that one. Shortbow. Willful. What the fuck is that? Alright. This is an interesting Warbow skin I've never seen. No, I have seen that. We got a Crossbow. We got a Hawkeye Crossbow. Yep, I think that's everything, folks. I'm not going to draw this video out anymore. I'm just going to end it right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to save with the locked items, obviously. And thank you guys for watching. If you watch this thing all the way through, hopefully this quiets everyone who wanted a new skin video. But, if there do happen to be... If there does happen to be, Jesus Christ, my grammar, if there does happen to be a skin update in the future, I will definitely be making a new video for that. I've definitely fallen behind, and I'm sad to have made a video this long just to catch up. But I'm glad you guys have made it all this way. Again, leave your comments about opinions on the format of my videos. And I hope you enjoyed. As always, have a grand day, and I shall see you kind people next time. To Ripper out.